Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nati Allah, Ti Rasul, Ulul Amri, Minkum, inshaAllah. What we got from last night inshaAllah from our audience online inshaAllah we went over a lot of information, very deep information inshaAllah. People take the time to contemplate and, and meditate what is the reality or towards the understanding of the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi And then when Allah wants to be known, He'll be known through Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi And all the hadith of Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah that this is all about Prophet that the heart of Prophet is the house of God. And that Allah in this way of marifah describes neither the heavens or the earth means none of the world of form or the world of light can contain me but the heart of my believer. Again Allah directing us to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that becomes the source and power of Allah's Divinely Presence. Because Allah has no location, so Allah's qudra and might and power is located in the heart of the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and pre-eternal and ancient reality and what we call Manzil Qur'an, the house of the Holy Qur'an, the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah is an immense, immense reality. And this way of negation in which Ramadan renders the servant to be nothing, crushes, takes away all the bad characteristics from the power of fasting which Allah wants to grant the nation this reality. And by the tenth month Allah is crushing and teaching in their binary system that be nothing and come towards the Divine the Presence. And the teaching of that nothingness, the reality of al-mahi of the noob, the one whom crushes everything that tries to make itself a partner with Allah is the holy reality of Prophet that becomes the key and the door towards that reality. That by the eleventh month and because… As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Comes the secrets of Zul, Zul Qida, which is the mirror of that Divinely reflection. That Allah want to grant creation that if you want to come to La ilaha illallah, you have to come through the door of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that is the highest gift from paradise and Allah wants for His creatures paradise realities, not dunya realities. So that He wants all of His creation to come to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah in the material world. So it means to come to the prophecy and the messengership of Sayyidina Muhammad is the key, is the door. And that's when Allah out of the Prophets of Allah there are stories of how they wanted to attain that reality and Sayyidina Musa salam, and the whole story of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr to meet with a Muhammadan guide, a Muhammadan representative so that he could accept 
and what he what he gave an awwala muslimun that accepted that to be from Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. Sayyidina Isa salam wanted that reality and said, Ya Rabbi raise me in this life so that to come back and be a part of the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. So means and, and then for those whom they physically didn't try to achieve that reality or wasn't written for them, Allah took them for Isra that all to be present Masjid al-Aqsa and to take their shahada and pray behind Muhammadun Rasulullah So it's an immense, immense door. The king of the mulk is the only door to reach the kingdom of Malakut and that when we understand that we see what a gift Allah has given to us. That before we, we want this or we want that or we, we, we complain we didn't get this, we didn't get that. The shame that we should feel is we don't truly understand what Allah gave us with the beatific <coughs> immensely beatific, you, how do you even say the immense lights and realities of Sayyidina Muhammad That we live a thousand lifetimes we can't thank Allah enough for that light, that ability to be honoured to be under the nation of Muhammadun Rasulullah And it's the immensity of that gift and, and what Allah has given to us that Allah is described, Wa ma arsalnaka, I would not have sent, I would not have sent the kingdom of this malakut, the kingdom of this world of light except that His presence is the key and a rahmah. Why? Well now we know what that rahmah is, means they would have never reached the kingdom of light's realities without the presence of Prophet upon this earth. If His presence was never going to come onto this earth they would have never achieved that reality. But because Allah wanted creation to achieve it, He brought the reality of Prophet whether through their physicality, through their actions and through their ruhaniyat that they accepted, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah so alhamdulillah that this is an immense gift, immense blessings and a reminder that in this way of hajj the real hijrah is to the realities of Allah and to the holy presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Alhamdulillah. For our audience online and wherever you are in this universe inshaAllah, so the people meditating, contemplating, we have maybe people coming from other dimensions logging on, something like watching in their ships. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah May I have a clarification of what you mean by how we need to be tested in the world of form to get to the heavenly kingdom? I apologize if I didn't understand the talk. No worries, no worries. May I have a clarification on how we are to be tested in the world of form to reach the world of light? It's called life. When people don't know the goal, they don't understand the purpose. So what is, what is the most common question with atheist and agnostic people? And they always think, oh I'm going to ask you a question that will truly baffle you and that nobody has been able to answer. And I said, no every Muslim on earth who came on this earth has answered that question. Because agnostic and atheist people they want to know why suffering, why difficulties, 
Why all these things if God exists, why do these sufferings exist? And this not knowing the purpose of our existence means not understanding our destination. Our destination is to the heavens. We were given a ticket to come here for an experience like sightseeing and the vastness of our eternity, what is 80 years? Those who are in science and math they write a line, a linear line and this represents eternity. What's the point of 80 years? It's less than a dot on a line for eternity because eternity has no beginning and <laughs> no end. So 80 years how would you measure that? It's impossible so they call on science and epsilon non, it's non-existent dot. So in this non-existent life of ours, physical life, we were here to be tested to have a spiritual experience, to go through our testing in life and difficulties in life. God gave us a supreme gift called free will that, I'm going to send you down because in the heavens there's no free will. It's but the will of God is the ocean of light. So then on this vacation booked a flight with a two-way ticket and gave us a little pass card and said, this pass card is a free will. When you go to the earth don't be distracted by shaitan because shaitan is down there and that this card of your free will don't use it. Don't abuse it and surrender it back to me while you're on earth because I will get it from you through your death because Allah takes everybody's card back, this is the secret of death. So then our, our highest reward is not the people who gave it a death, that's the lowest reward because Allah stole it back from them, took it, taken it back from them. Because death is the great equalizer, that's when everybody's card gets punched. They like it, they believe, they didn't believe, it doesn't matter Allah take it back. But what was the greatest gift to give was that on earth to realize, oh, I've been given immense card, I've been given free will. I have the will to choose to do good and to do bad and I choose to do good through the overwhelming tide of bad because of my destination and they tried to find heavenly people, heavenly paths and begin to ask Allah, please take my card back. I surrender my will to your will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, all holy books. That is the whole meaning of Islam is taslim to submit, submit what? Submit your will to the will of Allah means punch your card and surrender yourself. This was our whole entire purpose. Now atheists and agnostic they forgot that we're going back. They took the card and they forgot they even have this card of free will. <clears throat> they keep asking questions that are related to the card and attribute them to Allah. When there's crime, ask the people who hold their card on this earth, why is there crime? When there's unnecessary sickness and death, ask the people who hold their card on this earth, why is there unnecessary sickness and death? Why do you poison our food, poison our water, poison our medicine, poison our toothpaste, poison our money, poison our children and do everything? and had nothing to do with Allah It's the card that you abused your free will and you imposed your will on and an upon others and you don't care if you make a profit and kill everyone in the process. So it means our question or to the people whom are using their will to abuse people and Allah this is the greatest gift He gave, He said, I gave you free will. Why would you blame me for the crimes of people whom impose their will upon others? 
you have to blame yourselves. You're not choosing to follow me, you're not choosing to surrender your will. And that becomes the power and the might of Islam. That becomes the greatest gift is the one whom is awakened, not that he is disoriented and then reorient himself in a different direction and tomorrow thinks he's now a zebra when Allah made him a human. But the one whom is awoken realizes, my goodness I have this card of free will and the only gift I can give the Creator is give my will back. Just like His heavenly kingdom, I want to bring His kingdom on earth in which the heavens there is no free will. When it's time to pray all of creation comes with light and praise. There's nobody in creation saying, oh I'll pass this one. The world of singularity and light is complete taslim, complete submission. So means this is the highest gift and highest reward for creation. Surrender the card, surrender the will. Our life is then a lifelong process on surrendering that will and to return as a servant of Allah to serve the Creator and to serve His creation inshaAllah. <clears throat> Everything in this life then is a test. If you pass those tests and understand them, be patient and persevere, then we understand that each time we pay, pass a test we will be given a beautific dress with patience. When we don't have patience then we didn't pass the test. Then another two tests have to come. They don't go away because Allah is not fearing us saying, oh I won't test him anymore. It just increases, maybe he didn't get the point, let's test him even harder. So tariqahs come as a guidance to people that, please Allah is going to test you, submit. Submit and, and keep praying to Allah that don't test me beyond my ability and put your head to the ground like all the Prophets of God and surrender your will to the will of Allah and surrender yourself to the izzat and might of Allah bi izzatika sajidan wa bi qismatika radiyan that by your izzat and might my head is on the ground, don't, you don't have to send somebody to cut my head off because of my ego. And whatever you have written for me under your pen of might, I am subject to that. So alhamdulillah that becomes a beatific life of submission inshaAllah. <clears throat> the reality of Islam, not, not what being professed today, we're in an ignorant time, the second ignorance that's what we describe. When we say that Dajjal is upon the earth, Dajjal is in Islam big time, Dajjal is in Christianity, Dajjal is in Judaism and he's operating and running all of them. There are only pockets of light within these faith that uphold the true teachings of the ways of heavens. So alhamdulillah and the deen and religion of Allah is only Islam, there is no other religion. And that's why you see that Islam upholds the way of Allah and teaches creation to submit to Allah The love of Sayyidina Isa is in Islam, the love of Sayyidina Musa is in Islam. So the, the only religion of Allah is submit and that's Islam inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah When a person takes their last breath going through the seven veils, are those doors to pass from the door of Muhammad to Ahmad's door Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I don't know that it doesn't relate like that <clears throat> or you're, we're just talking something simplified, something different. That when they take their last breaths they now enter into Hayat al-Barzakh. 
So means the soul left the body and now has to enter into the grave. And the condition in which it enters into the grave begins the new level of testing, 70,000 times more difficult than the testing of the physicality. So means that as soon as they enter into the grave, what condition are now coming into this grave? So these teachings, if you understood the reality of these teachings is not so much for people to come and have enjoyable foods and you know to, to wear some logos and have some nice talks that are exciting for people. The true value of the teaching was for the soul on its last breath because they know that the most horrific event is the events of the grave. And that was the, the purpose and the essence of the teachings. The teachings were we would write these realities, we would understand these realities, we would be busy with our awrads, our wazifas and salawats and zikrs, why? To give a power, to give a light upon the soul, to give a presence upon the soul so that when it went into the grave it was prepared. It does all of its zikrs, it has all of its understandings. Immediately it asks for the mother of the shaykhs, asks for the mother in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Because it knows that this is an abode that will be very difficult. And that's why Allah describes that when somebody is, is guided and truly and rightly guided, he's guided to the ways of the love of Prophet whom are in the hands of awliya. Means the lovers and ashiqeen of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of that love and that teaching they call for that presence and call for that blessings in their time of need, in their hour of need. The hour of need is most understood by the grave. So we may have hours of need in the physical world, they are nothing in comparison to the moment we enter into the grave. We have done many things maybe that have angered Allah that we've taken the rights of people, things that have been put upon us, done upon us, whatever the conditions are that we want to go into that condition with immense love for awliya, love for the companions, love for Ahlul Bayt, love Most High for Sayyidina Muhammad love for Allah Most High. Why? So that we call upon them, those then at that time we understand the value of what was taught to us. At that time we understand what type of blessings Allah gave to us to take away these difficulties. When the difficulties have gone and the grave becomes the beatific dress, beatific blessings, beatific awards. At that time the servant knows Allah now is, is radi, is, is, is content with his servant. Now begins the dressing that here's this, here's your zikr that you did, here are your contributions that you did, here's the path in which you followed, here are all of these awards given upon your soul for the good deeds and the good actions and the immensity of light and love for the Divine the Presence. Those then become the dress upon the soul that now takes them into the Muhammadan realities. So their grave condition when they die should be a Muhammadan condition if that was understood by what we said, right? So the one whom is a student, we said they enter the grave immediately madad. They're making their salawats, they're asking for the presence of their shaykhs, they're asking for the presence of Prophet that means that grave becomes Muhammadiyun because all ashiqeen are now being called for relief and the presence of Prophet is being called for relief. That's a Muhammadan grave, that's the ashiqeen, that's like a rose garden, there's going to be very limited amount of, of punishment because there's so much barakah and blessings now coming into that vicinity. So what happens then? Now becomes the diminishing of difficulties, the intercession of Prophet inshaAllah 
and all now then the dressings and blessings. So that was then the key of Muhammadun Rasulullah Only through that key now Prophet can come into the grave and say, I'm very happy with you. I'm happy with what you did, I'm happy with the life that you led, I'm happy with your tashrif and tahzim in which you try to, to glorify Allah and raise my name amongst people and now I take you to Maqam al-Mahmud and I take you into the malakut and the worldly and heavenly light realities that can only be achieved. Now look at the one who walked away from guidance. He enters the grave thinking he has a relationship with Allah and yes I accept Muhammadun Rasulullah if they come to ask me a question of who my messenger was. They don't believe in intercession of Prophet they don't do any salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad and they were fooled by shaitan to think that they have a very powerful unique relationship with Allah and they cut out Muhammadun Rasulullah What does that person do now in the grave? Call out, scream, yell and what does he keep yelling? Allah, Allah. But what Allah is listening for? That what happened to Muhammadun Rasulullah? Oh Stafir, we would never say something like that. And shaitan fooled them in their belief. You say, why? What's the motive? When a crime occurs the police come to you and say, the motive is what gives you an understanding. The motive of shaitan is punishment for Adam and Bani Adam. He wants nothing more than Adam and Eve and their children to be punished because you're the favoured of Allah and he got thrown out. He loved nothing more than, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go scream all you want directly to Allah, don't mention Muhammadun Rasulullah and they end up in difficulty and difficulty and difficulty. And Allah inspire within their heart that, haven't you seen a Muhammadan representative? Haven't you seen anything pious? Don't you remember from your childhood or what your father maybe taught you? And maybe they'll be inspired to begin to make their durood al-sharif and their salawats in the grave. And at that time Allah send a rahmah and a mercy to reinforce the aqeedah because Allah doesn't want to reward an incorrect belief, He wants to reward the correct belief that you have to have the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah And this is the owner of our nation, this is the owner and the secret and the keys of this nation. So yes it's a big, big gift to, to die with this love, to die with correct guidance. To, to die with the understanding and the re reality of the key. And that's why we said Dajjal is coming to tell everybody, La ilaha illallah. Did you think he's only coming with horns? No, he's coming to tell everybody, La ilaha illallah. And he's going to have summits and hearings and they're going to come from all over the world. And many, many Muslims going to come. Because we said they're most of them not following Sayyidina Matthew they're more interested in 400 billion dollars on a ball. So what happens then? The Dajjal comes and the Dajjal representatives and the Messiahs come and they say, what? La ilaha illallah, unify everybody. Why? Because they took our key away. You say, La ilaha illallah, oh you won't but it means nothing to us unless you say Muhammadun Rasulullah so we said this is their aqeedah, don't be surprised when they start to have summits and hearings and, and bringing people, no. This is a system of dajjal to take the key away so that they all enter into the grave forgetting Muhammadun Rasulullah And Prophet described there'll be a day in which they on the member of Rasulullah they won't mention the name of Muhammadun. They won't mention hadith, they won't mention anything. I mean, they'll talk about Qur'an but they'll never talk about Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why the Nat Sharif was a warning from awliya. Zikri ki, what's the one huh? Khuda nakuna, 
that they say Allah but they don't say Muhammadun Rasulullah And this is, was a warning for the people, a day is coming. This is the aqeedah of the Messiah and the Dajjal people to try to unify people and take away the power of the nation. The power of the nation is in Muhammadun Rasulullah because with the key of Muhammadun Rasulullah you open the reality of La ilaha illallah. Without that key Allah is not sending support inshaAllah. InshaAllah time for Salatul Maghrib, we'll come back and answer and have some more questions and, and hopefully an answer. Rahmati Muhammad al Musafa to see the Surah al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.